Hey Frontline fans, welcome back to Comic Frontline and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do that all-important comic book review so you, the fans, can make a decision on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, we're talking about Marvel Now's The Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, issue number one. Now, this version of the series is written by Jerry Conway, and the art is done by Ryan Stegman. Now, if you guys have not read your copy... Please read your copy first, then come back and see me as I will be discussing some spoilers in this book. So, with that being said, let's go into the review, shall we? Alright, first things first is we're going to talk about the artwork in the book. Um, I was a fan of Ryan Stegman's artwork when he did Superior Spider-Man. And, uh, and then also when he did, I think, the Scarlet Spider series. Um, I thought it was really well done. When he did Uncanny Avengers from All New All Different, I thought the artwork was much different there. He made his his characters really um, kind of like bony and it just I didn't enjoy it. This time around he goes back to the way he draws Spider-Man like he did in Superior. And the artwork is very detailed. Um, at times it's a little dark because of course he has Spider-Man fighting at night and he's fighting in dark alleyways but then when it deals with him and his family uh the characters are have lots of great facial expressions um and uh and it's very bright and it's very colorful um at times the paneling in the art is overwhelming for the reader but i think it's meant to do that to kind of have the reader experience the chaos that goes on in the Parker household. How, you know, Mary Jane is saying something, Peter's saying something, Annie Mae is saying something, and there's all this little chaos that's going around. Uh, I love the little action scenes that go on in the book, and uh, of course, I love J. Jonah Jameson whenever he makes an appearance in the book, and he surely does in this uh, issue. And uh, just when you see him and he talks, he reminds you of. You know, just the way he talks maybe in the movies, like, hey, Parker, you know, get with me. Or Spider-Man and Amazing Friends, he's like, give me those photos, you know. So it's really awesome. And uh, here's a picture of um, Spider-Man going through um, the city cityscapes, and then there's this nice uh, two-page spread. So uh, I talked a little bit more of the artwork in here, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great artwork, and it fits a Spider-Man book. All right, so... What was the story about this time around? How did they kick this one off? Well, in this issue, we wind up seeing um, Spider-Man or Peter trying to do the day-to-day -day lives of going grocery shopping, but yet he runs into the Scorpion. In this version of the Scorpion, he's just like this beefed-up version of the Scorpion has this huge tail, and uh, he goes against them in the issue. Here's what he looks like here. And... Uh, you know, he makes short work of them, but then he winds up, you know, kind of going back home and he forgets the grocery list and all kinds of stuff. And then behind the scenes, we get to see something going on here, um, which looks like is probably tied into the Osbournes. Uh, we don't get quite the story there and we get little seeds that are dropped in, but they're interested in the whole um, Regent's uh, old um, laboratory or or. or chemistry or lab or whatever you want to call it and so after Peter gets back we wind up seeing the everyday life of the Parkers in here and we get to see uh, Annie Mae just messing around with her science project and she's trying to do things like her dad she's very you know curious type of girl and she messes up and, and it was really awesome and then you get to see the next morning uh, as they wake up as the household has all kinds of chaos going on and Annie Mae's talking about her turtle and how he she thinks he's so fat and Peter's trying to make pancakes and he's trying to remember the uh, the actual grocery list that's going on and they're trying to remind any May to stay safe and so they give her these like little earplugs in case there's some um, uh, you know she's ever in trouble or whatnot so it was really cool to see that family aspect of the book then what the book does is it really goes back to the roots of Peter Parker and uh, it deals with him still having his job at the Daily Planet so if you like that profession you're gonna love this here and this goes back to the old school way he goes out he takes pictures and uh, and J. Jonah pays for him and you get the you know the daily uh, ragging on Peter Parker from J. Jonah and uh, it's just awesome to relive that all over again in this version of Spider-Man. And uh, the cool thing is, is Spider-Man now doesn't take pictures 
just with his handy dandy camera anymore. He has a drone that flies with him to get those action shots. And the thing that's great about this is the, the issue kind of pokes fun at him working at a lab. He says in this one is that it's boring. And what fun would that be? So that was really awesome. I was like, oh man, it's it's making fun of um, <coughs> the Amazing Spider-Man series, uh, Peter Parker Industry Spider-Man. So the next thing you wind up seeing is that they go back to Regent's old place and there's a sinkhole that's developing. And then next you see is that there's a dinosaur and mole man and they're taking over Spider-Man. They're, they're capturing him. And the next thing we see is the new twist on this whole thing with Renew Your Vows. How it's just not a, a Peter Parker book, but it's a family book. And this time around we have... Um, Mary Jane that gets involved in the situation and she's helping Peter and she sits there and says you're not alone on this whole journey anymore we're here working each other out as a team but then finally as as they're trying to as they're capturing the mole men and defeating the creatures they wind up finding out that Annie May wind up getting captured and she's like uh, guys I, I, I kind of messed up here and so and that's how the issue ends so it's a great issue. So let me talk about the main story because there's backstories in this as well. Um, I think this book captures the true essence of Peter Parker's Spider-Man, yet with a twist, with his family. And we saw that in Renew Your Vows based off of uh, Secret Wars 2. Uh, but this continues that. And you get to see that everyday life of what Peter goes through with him and his family. And then you get to see the adventures with him in Spider-Man. It, it was absolutely brilliant. His humor is there. Um, his wittiness is there. And uh, just with him teaming up with his wife and with Annie Mae will make this book that much better. There's little seeds being planted in there of what's to come for future story arcs. And I can't wait to see where that goes. Together with the art and the story, this was a five-star story. I loved it. It had me smiling all the way through, and Jerry Conway caught the true essence of what Peter Parker's Spider-Man truly is. It's awesome, and it's great to see him writing this book again. Now, uh, we get two secondary stories in this book, <clears throat> and this one is called Spider-Dad. So if you're a dad, and you have a daughter, and you get time alone with your daughter, it's father-daughter time, right? And it is great. This one is written by uh, Anthony Holden, and it has MJ going out on the town, and we wind up seeing that uh, Peter and Annie Mae spend the day together. And she's like, no ice cream, so he starts feeding her donuts, and they're watching Tangled together, and they make all the nice little Disney references, because Marvel can do that. And uh, Jay Jonah calls him in, and he's like, but he's like, where are you, Parker? I need you to get those those pro photos in right now. So the next thing you wind up seeing is Peter's flying through the um, on his webs through the city, and he hands her off to Sandman, and Sandman has to take care of her. And so she starts demanding making sand castles and make a, a tower just like entangled, and the hair has to be braided, and it was absolutely hysterical. And at the end of the day, they all get to share little moments with each other, and it was a great little family uh, type of story. It was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Again, if you have a daughter and your dad, uh, you can relate to this story, how, how precious those alone time moments with your daughter are. And then the next uh, story has to do with Mary Jane and Annie Mae on how they were creating their costumes and how uh, Mary Jane's uh, place winds up getting broken in uh, by the rhino and how these two wind up stopping rhino at the end of the day. This story maybe wasn't as strong for me but this was good as well, as it had to do with Annie Mae spending mother-daughter time together. And I felt that is just as important, too. So this was a really great uh, overall issue. This is uh, the next cover. And uh, I thought it was awesome. A again, five stars all the way around. Last week, we had the Earth's Mightiest Avengers that were released. And we wound up paying $5 for a book where the story had no chemistry and uh, yeah, no idea how these characters really got together. The artwork was all over the place. There wasn't an extra story at the end, um, you know, and it, it just it, it just was a mess. And this week we get this, 
And this was absolutely brilliant. The one week we had Miss Marvel that was $5 for the issue, and they threw in this miscellaneous random Red Widow story. You know, if I'm going to pay $5 for a book and it's got extra stories in it, um, at least let them be related to the character. And this book stayed true to that and uh, really got you to appreciate those characters even that much more. So a uh, really great book. I definitely suggest you guys go out here buy this one, especially if you're a hardcore Spider-Man fan. I think you're going to really love this. And Jerry Conaway, uh, I know, at least in this first issue, really put his heart and soul in it. And hopefully he continues that way. I can't wait to read more, guys. This is awesome stuff. So, guys, five out of five stars for me. Now it's your turn to put it in the comments below what you thought of The Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows issue number one. So again, guys, thank you for watching Comic Frontline, and until the next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, guys, take care. Bye.